one of the best examples, I think, on, on the opposite side, because usually it's the casual players that get a lot of grief for complaining about stuff. But I, I'm going to say it, dude. The pros lost their mind over Goyo, and Goyo is being used in Pro League. But is this what OP looks like? He, I get it. He's a utility drainer. You know what I mean? Like, it requires a completely different thought process. Like, the the, the fact that he's available on the board basically means you've got to have a Zofia. You've got to have a lot of destruction in order to deal. And you're, you're probably not going to be able to deal with everything. But we've seen him used for half of, for a split now. And yes, he has had an impact. But is this what OP looks like? Is this... Is this what we we were so afraid of? Because I can't justify any well, type of nerf to him right now. I, I can't based, based, up, based upon what I've seen in ranked or what I've seen in pro league. Now it may continue to develop to a point where it gets to where we do have to take one of those shields away. But right now, there's no way that I could justify it. Why do we assume that that he's been played right? I, okay, because I, I think I mean, we always we, we always believe that. Just because it's played in Pro League, it's done correct. And I I don't think that just because a, a, an operator has been in Pro League for a while, that that is the the best way to min max and and, and play that operator. Uh, the the one will give that will give the most wins. I I still truly believe that if if Legion, for example, was played as, as an anchor in in competitive, he would be nerfed to the ground within a half a year. Um, there there are so many like uh, Goyo Goyo's Strength is is so much bigger if Castle and uh, Maestro's run at the same time. We saw that in uh, a cafe game. I think it was Vitality against I can't remember who. Um, they couldn't remove the utility. They just couldn't. Um, Goyo by himself doesn't. It's not that scary. You got to deal with a couple of shields. Cool. But when you um, also have to deal with Maestro and Castle and everything else. Uh, for me, I think the bigger thing is that, and this was brought up on on the subreddit actually, because uh, a lot of people on the subreddit were saying the same thing. Like, kind of, I mean, the Reddit analysts were like dunking on um, the fact that pros were complaining about Goyo. Uh, I don't think Goyo's impact has been as large as it has been because Vigil, Castle, Mute, and Mozzie's pick rates are abnormally high. Right now, if you're talking about min maxing on most maps, bringing some combination of those four operators is better as a utility soak, but additionally better at wasting time. If you if you nerf Mute, Mozzie, Castle, Vigil to some capacity and you see all their pick rates fall, I think you see Goyo's pick rates surge along with Maestro's. And then we start to see bands move as well. Because right now, Mute and Mozzie are far more effective than Castle Goyo. They're far more effective than Maestro Goyo. They're number one, they're a lot harder to shoot the pests and the jammers than to soak through three of those Vulcan shields and to deal with either castle barricades or evil eye cams. You can still bring information with Mozzie and you can then run a Valk or even run a Maestro or run an Echo because there's only two defensive operator bands. I, I think Goyo's usage has been suppressed just because there's a better and stronger alternative, which is mute Mozzie, maybe castle, maybe vigil. Those you can play both them off site it's going to take a lot of time for you to drone effectively. You roam a lot better with it. I just ultimately think that if you were to nerf them, you would see Goyo's pick rate go up. And I still think there's some very large concerns about a team that can conceivably run five deployable shields of which all have slots to look through in addition to two maestro cams, in addition to maybe Valkyrie cameras, in addition to maybe a castle, etc. And right now, it's just simply that there's a stronger tactic for defenders to use. It's not that Goyo's bad. It's just that right now, there's something more effective. And that will most likely do the whole rock, paper, scissor with, with the meta, right? So you, you can can play the, the, the mute mossy right now, and that's most likely going to make attackers clump up more and do a more direct attack together. So they need less info, mm -hmm. uh, maybe more shield play, stuff like that. Once that becomes a thing, then Goyo will increase in pick rate because now you can stop bunkering down and waste utility on the, on the frontal attack. So... Eh. If you uh, I, 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 yeah, I think you're right. If you know if that, then we'll see Goyo. I agree with everything that both of you have said. I think that the, the only thing that I'm reiterating is I also agree with Ubi not nerfing him to, uh, yet. Um, I, I And there were lots of people who thought it was insane that they weren't. And um, I think it just kind of it, it, it illustrates the point that you were saying in that a lot of times we're uh, – anything that we see that's new – seems a lot more frustrating than anything that's been in the game that we've gotten used to. 
and because you yeah you're not used to it yeah so. yeah exactly and it's yeah. it's it's kind it of takes a while anyway for it for it to fully emerge because sometimes what you see in um when the wind delta graphs um come out can be surprising sometimes it's fully expected but sometimes because an operator's new you expect something different because you are um, from a psychological point of view, you're very conscious of their presence all the time because you're seeing them, and so you expect a certain trend to appear that doesn't. But it's way too soon to start talking about stuff like that when he has a presence of 5%. And By the way, um, I'm sorry I disappeared. I sent Flanked a WhatsApp I uh, blue-screened. <laughs> and I think it's to do with my webcam because when I rebooted, my webcam was completely dead. So sorry about that. Glad you're back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, just one last thing that I want to contribute to this is that the other thing to keep in mind is that we can go back to like the whole Jackal Dokubi thing where it's like on their own, they're not that big of an issue. Goyo might, like, let's say hypothetically that I'm wrong and that Goyo isn't actually that big of an issue and he's just fine. There's nothing to say that another defensive operator doesn't come out, you know, in however many months from now you know, maybe next season, the season after, who plays a similar role, who can also bring a deployable shield, but then also has a gadget that you're going to need an explosive to take care of. Well, now you're making Goyo even stronger, just as Mozzie made Mute even stronger, just as Dokubi and, ja mm -hmm. you know, Dokubi and Lion made Jackal even stronger. So that's the toughest part about balancing these, these types of games. You see it in MOBAs, Overwatch in particular, one new character, operator, hero, et cetera, on their own in isolation, might be fine, might not be a problem, might not be an issue. But then they pair up with somebody else, and holy hell in a handbasket, they are mighty good, and it's a very impressive way to play. Ying did that with Glaz. Lion did that with Jackal and Dokubi combined. You've seen Shields work that with Finca and Lion as well. Yeah. And that's something that's really challenging for this for this dev team to deal with. So, yeah, I mean, I, I don't really care. I still think moving Goyo down to two shields, regardless of his strength, I think is a good idea. I think he will still see play. He still brings two deployable shields. He still has a decent kit. Like, I don't think it would be that, I mean, that hard done by. He has everything, by. right? He has everything. Yeah. You, you this is the trend, this? though. This is the trend. All of the new operators are so over-kitted. Like, Mozzie, what is his downside? Lesion, what is his downside? Goyo, what is his downside? They literally don't have one. No, I, I think it's... You don't. You also don't want a warden. That's the problem. Um, like, right now... So so I'm looking at the wind delta right now, and Goyo is below warden in, in wind delta, and just above him in presence. Yeah. Uh, and he definitely doesn't see a lot of banning. At not, not a, a, like, plat one and up. Right. I don't think I've seen maybe banned like once a week max, right? Yeah. Who Goyo? So yeah. So yeah, who, I don't think I've ever seen a Goyo get banned. Who's maybe playing once. Goyo so bad that he's all the way down there? Because that's got to be a lot of people. He has immense utility dump. That it is like there's no attacker that's ever going to move past that shield. They just don't, right? It goes back to our I, previous I conversation. Ranked. Is not about utility, dude. It's about getting no, yeah, kills right yeah, now. Yeah, I, I agree. That's it. I, that's, I don't. But that's don't the whole point. So if you nerf him, ranked. if you nerf him, uh, well, I don't know. I've, I he's my best operator this entire season. Um, no. But but if if you nerf him for for pro league now when he isn't doing a lot, he's going to be even worse in ranked. And the problem is that by the time Goyo is being a big impact on pro league, Kali is probably out and allowed. I mean, my thing is, it's just like it, with Goyo, uh, number one, I mean, I played a lower elo than you. I played around plat two, plat one right now. Uh, not a significant step down, but it, I think enough. And I'm, I usually play solo as well, whereas I know yeah. you tend to be with a group. So, I mean, obviously what I'm going to see is it, is few and far between in comparison to you. It's it's much smaller sample of, of actual team play. Goyo as a solo queue operator sucks. The amount of times where <laughs> I'm playing and my teammates who are like also plat two, plat one, which is supposed to represent like the top 2% mm -hmm. of a player base are still putting Goyo shields in just dumb fucking spots or like not like appropriately setting them up or like they're yeah. shooting them early. And it's just like, I think we're at a point now where Goyo's skill ceiling as an operator is very high. Mm -hmm. I think that he works extremely effectively as area denial. I think he works as a utility soak. I think he's anti-plant. I think he does a lot of things. The problem is, is that, you know, I, I agree with Flanked on this one as well. Ranked is not about utility. You know, people that 
let you, Zofia, realize how integral she is for a site push or for opening up sight lines. They just use them to open up a wall and then walk through that wall, like on the other side of the map. And you're like, what are you doing? Just bring breaches at that point. Like people are not, they're not really thinking about it. So Goyo in pro league is going to be very different than he is in ranked. And I think that's, this is one of the follies with, uh, with, I think with balancing around ranked is that my experience in EU ranked primarily solo queue is that the people who are playing this game have no fucking clue what it is like to play in pro league, which is fine. It doesn't need to be pro league. But if you see Goyo being this incredible operator in Pro League and then he sucks in ranked and then they turn around, and they go, well, we don't want to nerf him because in ranked he's bad. No, that doesn't hold water with me. You know, no. it, it's it's similar with Ying. They were saying like for a while back and Castle the inverse where they're like, we want to buff Castle because he's bad in ranked. His stats are terrible. He's never picked. He has a low win delta. And it's like, yeah, but in, in Pro League, he hovers around 20 to 30 percent. And he's instrumental in a lot of defenses mm -hmm. at enabling defenders to play a certain way. He doesn't need a buff. And then the same thing with Ying. When Ying was so strong, they're like, well, people don't really know how to use her in ranked. She's got a terrible win rate. You know, let's buff her gun. And people are like, why are you buffing her gun? She's already at a 30% pick rate in pro league and she's single-handedly destroying executes. Like, why? I don't look, think you can necessarily just look at ranked for that. That was exactly my argument. You don't want to nerf him yet in Pro League because he hasn't had a big enough impact in Pro League yet. I agree um, with that. You, like, I'm, I'm fine with hitting him the second it starts lo looking or smelling like Ying Glass Meta. Yeah. Sure. Um, but I, I also kind of enjoy watching the chaos of a crazy meta happening and then waiting to see who figures out how to break it. Because there will be someone who figures out how to break it. There is a weakness in, in goddamn everything. Yep. And no one can make a strat that, you know, can't be broken or something where there can't be a counter. And it kind of it separates the different teams. You can see that from just pick and ban. Like, some teams are extremely smart with their pick and bans. And other teams just have a default that they like to go for. Some teams make massive mistakes when they, they do their pick and bans. Mm -hmm. uh, operators, uh, not, not maps. I mean, it happens with maps as, as well. But that gamble, when it pays off, that that creates a really, really good match. Um, I'd just be sad to not see Goyo's full potential before he gets nerfed. 